Hi, today I want to look at another example of current healthcare system being murderous. You probably heard that about a week ago Purdue Pharma got dissolved and they have to pay four and a half billion dollars in settlement. It sounds pretty good, but if you look at the details closely, it's not. Purdue Pharma, owned by Sackler family, developed the drug called OxyContin. It is proven that they knew that this drug is highly addictive early on. They knew that its main ingredient, oxycodone, is stronger than morphine. But they failed to inform the public or the doctors about it. Their sales reps told misleading information to doctors. They pled guilty to all of that. They pled guilty to misleading doctors, patients and the government about this drug. Their actions fueled public health crisis that led to half a million of deaths. They made billions on this drug. And what did they get for it? None of them went to jail. They withdrew billions of dollars from the company prior to bankruptcy. Four and a half billion dollars uh, they have to pay have to be paid over nine years, most of it at the end of this term. Which means uh, that if they invest this money now, they won't lose that much. They are still billionaires and their victims cannot sue them personally. They are immune to criminal prosecution. This is not proper accountability for hundreds of thousands of deaths. This is nothing. And none of it surprises me. When the media covers this story, they usually only say how bad the settlers are, uh, which is true. But um, I rarely hear the conversation about how broken that whole system is. Sacklers are not the exception here. Deregulated, profit-driven capitalism and healthcare is a deadly combination. The system puts profits over people's lives and good health on a regular basis and if somebody gets caught, which happens very rarely, they get away with it because their huge money finds its way to power one way or another. Pharma companies influence medical education both initial and continued. They pour millions of dollars in medical schools. They are allowed by law to give money to high-profile doctors who make clinical practice guidelines. They influence research. They advertise drugs to doctors directly. And as the case of Purdue Pharma shows, pharma sales reps uh, can lie to increase their profits. So this Oxycontin scandal is not the exception, it is a symptom of a larger problem. They got caught because the link between the drug and the deaths was very clear to everybody in this particular case. But in a lot of cases this link is not that clear to people, but it still exists. Failure to fund the research of unprofitable treatment or failure to include such a treatment into official protocols can be very damaging. And yet these failures are not as obvious to the public. You can't really sue anybody for these things. They won't cause mass protest because of how invisible they are. Over-medicalization in psychiatry is a very clear example of that. I already did a video about it, link will be in the description if you're interested. A lot of people suffer and or die needlessly because our healthcare system prioritizes profitable treatments. I'll give you my thoughts and suggestions on how to fix the current system. I talked about it before, but I want to do this again. In my opinion, there can be two ways to fix the current system. We can try to regulate what we have by getting big pharma out of medical education, both initial and continued, mandating full transparency about all the corporations, uh, stop advertising drugs to doctors, providing funding to independent research and forbidding people who create treatment protocols to take money from pharmaceutical corporations. I think that this is the bare minimum of what we need to do. However, I don't think that this is the best solution because in this case most of the money will still be concentrated in the hands of big pharma CEOs and it creates a power imbalance and a high probability of corruption. I think that nationalizing pharma industry entirely will be a better solution 
that way we can create a system where profitability factor is taken out of decision making and the researchers who made medical breakthroughs are generously rewarded regardless of how profitable their treatments are. I also think that such a system can create actual functioning hierarchies of competence where the researchers are the main beneficiaries and not the executives. I believe that capitalism and healthcare do not work well together because not all effective treatments are, are profitable. And that in itself creates a conflict of interest that is hard to get rid of by regulation. I also think that human health is a fundamental value. It should not be commodified. It, sh it should not be a means uh, to get to some economic goals. Anyways, uh, these are just my thoughts on the subject. Maybe there are some better ways to improve the system that I just don't see. Um, this topic certainly can be debated, but what I know for sure is that the system we have right now is horrible. It results in needless mass-scale suffering and death. Out-of-control capitalism can be just as deadly as communism, if not more. And the case of Purdue Pharma is a perfect example of that. They put profits over people's health, caused hundreds of thousands of deaths and got away with it because they are rich and powerful.